Okay. Okay, apparently I have reconnected. I guess. I think. I don't even know anymore. I think. I don't even... I would love a, uh... A movie of Orson Owen Wilson playing Orson Welles in a biopic. Just because I don't think he could do it, but it would be fantastic. So, yes, I'm back, finally. I have spent the last few minutes yelling at my computer. It's it, it I went from almost 4,000 kilobytes a second down to zero. So, hopefully I'm back. And hopefully I'll stay back. Who knows? But, um... I, I went onto the actual Twitch webpage to look at my channel, and when I did, that's when it finally reconnected. Oof, this, this, uh, this big chunky part of the cape was the one I was most interested in, and I am struggling with this thing. There's just so much cape, and trying to get that blend from, um, from, like, the dark red and the maroon all the way up to the lighter thing that I've got going on has been a struggle. I mean, it looks really good from, via the footage, but it does not look that good in real life. It's very clearly, like, awkwardly hatch-marked. So, what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna go ahead and outline all the parts that I want to eventually be brighter. That's probably what I should have done earlier. <laughs> but yes, that, 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 that Orson Welles bit has consumed my, my meme thoughts for many years now. And I think this bitch just ate her baby might replace that, because that is too darn funny. She ended up nicknaming her Ed Gein because of, uh, how just aghast she was that this woman ate her child. Maybe Twitch wasn't happy that I kept showing YouTube clips. Who knows? This is not turning out very well, so I'm just going to keep futzing with it until it does. It feels like a colossal waste of time, but that's okay. I want a good cloak. My head was... That's my Starbucks coffee. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the, the insane, like, religious pastors just being not so futzo about everything. Um... <laughs> Oh yeah, Kieran, you're you're British, right? You you live you live across the pond, or however you want to call it. Um, I was mentioning in Pilkey's stream yesterday about how you could just kind of pastiche the entirety of uh, of like the middle part of North America or the United States with the phrase Bible Belt and be approximately accurate. Um, the 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 central parts of the United States are very very religious. But the type of religious they are is kind of weird. Because uh, there are some groups, not all of them, they're, they're lovely, lovely people out on the Bible Belt. But they have a very strong faith-based belief system. And uh, the ones who go really hard into it uh, start listening to pastors who are not incredibly well-educated and who make some very, very strange claims about how modern society is destroying you know, the godliness that is our civilization. And it leads to stuff like that, where you have pastors talking about that because Starbucks is, you know, uh, doing rainbow cups in celebration of LGBTQ recognition or whatever, that they're obviously Satanists and they're trying to convince you to go down a bad path. And um, they're doing horrible things to try and convert you to being gay or to make you into sinners without you realizing it. And I guess the putting the semen in the coffee is one of the things. <laughs> Which is, you know, clearly ridiculous and clearly just way out there, but I know, right? I mean, you can't find the clip. They, <laughs> that's, that's probably a good thing. Um, I would strongly encourage you to, I would not strongly encourage you to look that up independently, but I also cannot stop you because once you leave my stream, you are not my problem. But, um... Stuff like that legitimately exists, and that's why I reacted with so much less shock and awe than you did, is that there are pastors out there that say the weirdest things to try and keep their, 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 uh, people, their followers, extremely scared of modern society. 
and it's most likely because they've read horrible things from dirt papers that they believe to be true, or because they don't understand how to do research on the internet. Were links allowed here? Uh, yes, you can definitely put a link in there, and if you guys are interested enough, I'll go ahead and pick it up and put it on the big thing on the, on the mainstream. But I don't really know if I want to play a link of a pastor screaming about how Starbucks is putting semen in their coffee. <laughs> That, 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 that's a bit far out there. If you want to paste it in there, and that way Kieran can, 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 can see this horror for themselves. Oh boy. Okay, Kieran, go for it. Enjoy, enjoy what... <laughs> this is just a short outtake. Outtake as in they meant to say something else, or outtake as in you just grabbed a tiny clip? Okay, good. <laughs> oh, that reaction was beautiful. Uh, that's the thing is like, um, especially for a lot of people, um, reality doesn't have to work for their statements to make sense. You know what I mean? Um, there was a famous event a couple or about, oh gosh, almost 10 years ago, I think, called Pizzagate, which happened near DC. Starbucks is, is expensive, mediocre coffee. Uh, that's the best way to put it. Like, coffee snobs don't go there because it's clearly mass-marketed stuff, and, uh, uh, it's mostly just a convenient way to get coffee that doesn't taste terrible. But they, it's really marked up and very expensive. That's, that's what I can tell you about Starbucks. But, um, there was a thing called Pizzagate that happened many years ago because of the whole QAnon thing where uh, there was a very strong belief that the, the Democrats in particular and the liberals and all the all the people that the Republicans wanted to make their boogeymen uh, had a a hidden pedophile ring slave ring under a pizza place near DC and um, that in itself is incredibly you know like whoa whoa that went from zero to a hundred quick you know what I mean and um, again just crazy crazy things people have said on the internet so obviously not true and uh, that created a huge problem because some guy who very clearly believed this and wanted to be a warrior of justice or whatever to expose it went to that pizza parlor with an assault rifle well not an assault rifle by its most term with with an ar-15 and started you know demanding to be taken to this to this basement where these children were being sold into sex slavery and uh they obviously couldn't do it because it didn't exist, but also because there was no basement to that pizza place. So there is this this weird, crazy issue with with certain conspiracy theorists. Because there are some that just do it for the funsies. You know what I mean? Oh gosh, I don't, I don't, Pastor Manning. I, no, thank you. You you guys can can enjoy that, but um, I don't, I don't want to see any more from from that Looney Tune. Um, what bugs me is, I mean, what bugs a lot of people is that these people are, are clearly have a platform and they really shouldn't, you know what I mean? Um, this is stuff that they should be roundly mocked for and then ignored. But because it's so outrageous and because it's so crazy, uh, people end up listening and, uh, they, they end up having these huge audiences. I don't, I don't know necessarily Pastor Manning does or not, but, um, there, there's a lot of people like that. You got, you got, uh... What are they, Prosperity Christians with, like, Joel Osteen and that group? <laughs> I, I have no clue. I don't know. I, I don't give those people my time of day. I understand, the, you know, know thy enemy kind of thing, but it's just I don't I don't have the spoons to deal with that. I, I play enough Warhammer 40k to, to, to try and see religious satire. I don't need to see actual religious people being crazier than the 40k people. Okay, hopefully this blend will eventually look good when it dries out. Yep. I mean, it's the same with Pizzagate. There are still people that think that Pizzagate's a cover-up. Or that there's a cover-up that, that's behind Pizzagate, which I don't understand it. I haven't delved too deep into it. I... Uh... Crazy people, weird people. I I just weird people. <laughs> okay, now all I'm doing right here, I probably went way too bright with that. 
I'm using basically like a rough stippling method, which is just kind of like dragging your brush across it very lightly to build up some brightness so I can eventually go as bright as I just had it. I went way too bright initially. And now I'm just trying to create layers of brightness on this part of the cloak so that eventually when I get to that very bright, uh, that very bright part, um, it looks like it was naturally transitioning into light. Portal, but everyone has the TikTok voice. Oh dear. And so hopefully this slowly transitions to that bright high spot that I have on some of the other parts of the fold. Especially since this one's far closer to the light. It's probably going to go a little brighter than the other ones. And of course, like I've mentioned before, I am I am legitimately just kind of experimenting and playing around with this. I don't have an honest clue or structure other than I understand that light is supposed to be brighter, uh, or that parts are supposed to be brighter where light hits it. Hey, Ringbolt, how you doing? Uh, whoops, that's a little too much. I'm just trying to get this cloak done before the end of New Year's, before New Year's happens. It's it's ten, it's almost 11 o'clock where I am. Oh my god, it's almost 11 o'clock where I am. I need to get going soon. Um, and I was really hoping to get this model done before New Year's, just to say that I did. But uh, I've got a turkey to cook, and then I apparently need to do some grocery shopping because we're out of some things. I've got friends coming over later today, and... Uh, and, uh, so I've got to get some stuff done. Okay, thank you, Montravon. Uh, I'm sorry that the stream devolved into weird shitposting and memes, but I appreciate you being here. Hope you have a great rest of the, uh, great rest of the day and a happy new year. But yeah, I'm just slowly building my volumes up and with the stippling to try and create a cloak that looks halfway decent. With, uh, with the lighting and whatnot. And you can see in some places I went way too bright, and so I'm going to need to bring that back down. What'll probably help with this, actually, is if I were to take some Seraphim Sepia and just hit the entire cloak with it, because that would act as a, um, a unifier for all this, you know what I mean? And I'm probably going to do that once I get to the gold part, because my plan is I'm going to hit all of this, all of this border that I haven't touched, with a non-metallic metal gold. Which quoted now, yeah, nothing like uh, uh, taking back, uh, reclaiming horrible things said by horrible people to take all of the power out of it. More kudos to them for doing that. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna see how far I can get with this because I really need to get that turkey in the oven. I got it into the refrigerator way too late. Oh, just a special tip for you guys if any of you hate cooking turkeys because it always turns out too dry, uh, big suggestion that I can give you guys, I think I might have mentioned this before, uh, probably before Thanksgiving stream, was um, brine it in, in a cup of salt, or a half cup of salt, half cup of sugar for 24 hours, right? Brine the dang thing. Soak it in cold water and put it in like a cooler or a refrigerator or whatever for 24 hours in uh, water that covers the entire thing. So brine that. And then the next day after you've done it for 24 hours, uh, take it out and then put it on a tray uncovered in the refrigerator for another 24 hours because this will Okay, that's fair um, Turkeys are very much an I, I don't know if they're an American thing, but we have turkeys we have huge They're not an American thing, but we have turkeys and it's a big part of uh, Thanksgiving and I hate turkey <laughs> I used to really, really hate turkey because turkey always comes out dry as sin, with no flavor and horrible texture, and it's always just like eating wet napkin. And so I've never been much of a fan of turkey until I found a recipe that um, made it not taste like crap. Uh, so after you're done brining it, put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours with, with no covering. Just uh, put it on like a tray and put it in there. And then after 24 hours, take it back out, smother it in paprika and smother it in butter, and then put it in the oven for 15 minutes for every pound of turkey. And I don't remember the exact temperature, but I can find it. But what that'll do is it'll slow cook the turkey um, and 
don't baste it. That's something that I've heard is that basting the turkey takes hot oils from the bottom and puts it near the top and cooks that part of the turkey that you want to keep wet and makes it really dry. But it makes super moist turkey that is delicious. So I strongly suggest, it's actually, I'll be honest with you guys, it's Andrew Zimmern's uh, recipe for turkey. He was the host of Bizarre Foods for many years. And he's actually a chef chef, but he makes a really good turkey. It, it is a turkey that, a fr that friends who hate turkey will eat. So I strongly suggest you uh, find that recipe. Andrew Zimmern, Zimmern's thing. Ham is delicious. We got a chicken this year for New Year's. That sounds fantastic too. Like I do turkey just because I'm proud that I can make a turkey that doesn't taste like ass. But um, Christmas ham is definitely a thing. Christmas chicken is definitely a thing. Um, these are all things I'm familiar with and have heard of and all sound like delicious alternatives. I think my favorite one is, uh, just doing Chinese food. Because Chinese food definitely has its own appeal. And, uh, they generally are open for New Year's and Christmas, so... Like, actually, we had a pretty crummy day yesterday. Beef Wellington. That sounds like fun. I hope that goes well, because nothing is worse than having a failed recipe. Okay. Let's go a little bit brighter. I think one thing that I need to try again is I, I found a recipe for tekboki, or no, chun chun dak galbi, a, a Korean food that is basically like stir fried uh, chicken and vegetables with uh, tekboki in a gochujang sauce and is really, really good. But I bought the wrong gochujang and my baby mouth can't take how spicy it is. So no matter what I do to it, it always ends up being obscenely spicy. And so once I get some new gochujang, I'm going to have to try and make kanchan dak galbi again. And hopefully it'll turn out not spicy enough that I can actually enjoy it. <laughs> Let's go back even darker up here because that is a scoop that is not going to get a whole lot of light. There we go. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh no, I'm losing connection again, guys. We went back to red. Okay, I think that this guy is about as done as he's gonna get uh, before I need to go because I need to go. I don't think there's anything wrong with using pre-made sauces. Like, I feel like, I feel like we spend a lot of time shaming people for not wanting to use, uh, not wanting to go get the traditional stuff or whatever. But it's like, people got, people got limitations. People got restrictions on the time that they can do these things. Leave them alone. If that's what they want to cook with, let them cook that way, right? I mean, I still love, uh, oh my God, I forgot about the inside of this cloak. Um, I still love just like those cheap pre-made oven pizzas. Now, see, that's the thing, is that, in general, you're going to end up spending less money on, um, on, like, making it yourself if you buy the, if you buy it the right way, you know what I mean? Like, um, most foods are cheaper if you make them in bulk using bulk product. Because, like, I never just make one of anything. I never just make a single plate of gochu, or of, uh, chun chun dak galbi. I make a week's worth. And, um, between that... And the, the just general increase in quality of the food, um, or the, uh, it definitely ends up being worth it in the long run. But like, you know, like roasting a whole chicken versus going to, going to a, a, a takeout restaurant every day or whatever, you really end up having better quality of meal when you, um, when you make it yourself. And like the gochujang sauce, I think outside of like Korean chili powder and the gochujang itself, um, you're not really spending a whole lot to make it. 
And I mean, they do also have gochujang sauces. If that's how you want to do it, then go for it, right? But yeah, I used to watch a lot of Food Network stuff when I was in college because I really hated eating like a college student. So, um, I started finding out. I liked, I especially like things like Kitchen Nightmares and Restaurant Impossible because it was helping people who didn't know learn. And I didn't know, so I wanted to learn. And especially since most of the time the chefs were not of the highest quality on Restaurant Impossible, because that show was kind of a joke. Um, I mean, you can't you can't teach someone in a weekend how to save a failing restaurant that's close to closing. You know what I mean? But um, uh, what was I just thinking? But something I liked about that show was that he tried to teach them very simple recipes that were very. We had compulsory home ec classes. We did in middle school, and then they kind of gave up on it. Um, I learned some basic stuff from that, but uh, I didn't learn and retain enough to actually be any good at some of that stuff. So um, I kind of had to reteach myself when I was in college, and I actually had the motivation and interest in doing so. Because that was one of the crummy parts of, of being a kid, is that you know, your, your brain isn't fully developed, so it's very short-sighted. And when I was in middle school, having to take the home ec classes, all I wanted to do was play video games. So if there was information that I needed to have, most of it just left my brain. Like, we spent a week learning how to write checks. And uh, by the time I actually had to start writing checks, I didn't remember. <laughs> and it was it's not like it's a difficult process or anything, it's just that... Uh, that, that information was not accessible and familiar in my brain when I had to do it again, so there was a lot of anxiety of not remembering. I love this guy's cloak. Cooking and cleaning. Yeah, that was most of what we learned. We spent, uh, we did sewing with both uh, regular needlework and a sewing machine. We did uh, a lot of uh, cleaning, a lot of cooking. The one thing I did learn how to make when I was uh, in that was strawberry cobbler, and it gave me a love for strawberry cobbler. And then I forgot how to make the strawberry cobbler. <laughs> but I'm old enough now where I could just look up a recipe and figure it out, which has been incredibly helpful because I love me some strawberry cobbler. <laughs> I never really grew out of that phase where I like child foods. Okay, that might be a little too bright. But yeah, I have I have very semi fond memories of home ec now that I'm older, because we did learn a lot of very practical things. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, right? Like even if you don't remember all of it, the fact that some of it was retained shows that the class was useful. Because unless you are actively taking a class because you demand or desire to know information, uh, you're never going to remember anything, you know. And so the fact that we've been, we've had to take classes and some of it stuck with us, or at least some of it entered into our core memory, is probably immensely more helpful than, um, than us not taking the class at all. <laughs> Caramelized sugar to build a gingerbread house. Probably not, but I, I have done it in home ec. Well, yeah, see, like, stuff like that. Like, you remember doing it, so there is some, some deep, deep-seated memory about it. And then if you go online and you look up a video on it, or you look up a, um, or you look up a recipe for how to do it, or a step-by-step, -step, you already have some of that pre-built knowledge in there, which is definitely a good thing. Why are you getting redder? Stop getting redder. Actually, this is probably not good enough. Uh-oh. Benry Paints is getting lazy. <laughs> My brain is starting to tell me I need to stop. Um, that is going to be such a cool cloak when it's done. Okay, not my best work. Though I don't think I can complain. The best thing about home ec is when you make good food, you didn't have to go to the cafeteria for lunch. Yes. Being able to eat good food in home ec was awesome. We actually have something of that as a problem at the high school I work at, or that I teach at, is that they have a culinary arts class. Because we have a technical education center uh, attached to our school, right? And honestly, I think we should have more of those because learning those skills is important and being certified in practical jobs is important. But that's another rant. They have a, a, a culinary arts class there that is always exceedingly popular 
because everyone thinks that they can just go there and eat the food and they're not going to have to work really hard. Someone else will do it. So the, uh, the teacher there has been very strict on who's allowed to be in the class and who's not. I think this guy is close enough to being done. Especially since I'm working on his cloak that I can finally attach his stupid head. So I think that's what's going to happen next. Is he's about to get a dog. Um, and then I'm going to, and then I've got to sign off. I feel kind of bad for this captain because he is going to be the most tired looking space marine captain, praetor, whatever, that you guys will probably ever see. I didn't want to make the joke. But I appreciate that someone did. Uh, he's going to get unfairest manist is what's about to happen. And I hope someone in chat gets that joke. I don't know if anyone follows the Warhams like I do and follows the lore, but Ferris Manus is one of the saddest memes in the lore because that man was brutally murdered. <laughs> And I will gladly explain it if anyone is interested. Because I love talking about the lore of 40k. I think it is fascinating. I think they did an amazing job uh, building it into something more than just pulp. Though there is tons of that too, and that makes it fun. Oh no. The cutie got decapitated in some movie shoot with a heli from a helicopter. I've heard about that, and it's terrifying. But uh, no, that's not it, which is fine. Um, good reference, but I will say that if if I if there was a child whose name was Ferris Manus, um, I'd probably punch their uh, their parent in the head because Ferris Manus is literally Latin for Iron Hands, and Ferris Manus is the Primarch of the Iron Hands Legion of Space Marines, and he was most known for having liquid metal iron hands. So he was Iron Hands, Primarch of the Iron Hands with Iron Hands, which was about as on the nose as you can get with stupid Warhammer names. <laughs> okay, so the long, oh no, let me blow my nose real quick. Okay, so the long and short of it is that there was there was the Horus Heresy, where, ten, where nine of the Primarchs betrayed the Emperor and um, started a civil war with Horus at the lead, right? And uh, Ferris Manus was one of the ones that didn't betray the Emperor. He stayed loyal. But his best friend and fellow Primarch, Fulgrim, had betrayed the Emperor, and he tried to get Ferris Manus to join him. And when Ferris Manus wouldn't, they fought. Ferris lost, and... Uh, Fulgrim destroyed most of his ships, but wouldn't kill him because they were, like, best friends. So, um... Uh, they ended up fighting again at Istvan III, which is a famous moment in, in Horus Heresy history. Uh, also, or in Istvan V, I'm sorry. Which is also colloquially known as the Drop Site Massacre, because Ferris Manus led a punishment, a retribution fleet, with, um... Uh... Vulcan of the Salamanders and Corvus Corax of the Raven Guard to punish Horus and his his rebel allies and bring them back to the Emperor, right? And uh, they were supposed to be uh, reinforced by a bunch of other legions who were going to uh, arrive later. And what ended up happening was the other legions arrived and then immediately started firing on the Iron Hands and the Salamanders and the Raven Guard. So it was called the Drop Site Massacre because they were just caught between two armies and, and absolutely screwed. Uh, by the way, here is, I don't know if this is gonna show up okay. There is the Tired Face. It's not showing up, that's fine. Let's see if I can make more light on him. Let's get him out of the way. You gonna do it? You gonna do it? No, it's too small. I, oh, whoop, that was terrible. Focus on the guy, focus on the guy. Focus on the guy. Nope, it wants to focus on everything but the guy. Anyway, um, 
Ferris was so enraged by his brother's betrayal and was so enraged by just the, the absolute gall of him and Horus to have betrayed the Emperor that he didn't wait for the backup. He didn't wait for anyone. He just took his men and charged forward and he, they were going to bring back Fulgrim and his stupid and, and uh, Horus and all that back in chains uh, if it was the last thing they do. And so he charged forward, he fought Fulgrim, and uh, he lost. And as part of the process, Fulgrim, who at this point was was um, being possessed by a, a demonic blade, uh, the, the, the demon in the blade took control and gripped the sword and lopped off Ferris Manus' head. And then it gave full control back to Fulgrim, who suddenly looks around, realizes that his legion has become these horrible, corrupt monsters, and that he's killed his brother, and he's immediately guilt-stricken by this and racked with regret. And he hears a voice in his head that tells him, I can make all this pain go away, I can make all of this no longer your problem. And Fulgrim thinks it's telling him, I can, I can just end it all for you. And so Fulgrim says, yes, please, end my suffering. Things can't get any worse. And then the blade is like, bet, and it possesses him. But the big thing about that is that Ferris Manus got his head chopped off. And so now there's a million 40k memes about Ferris Manus not having a head. Man will never get a head in life. Uh, man's, you know, sh uh, head and shoulders smaller than everyone else, yada, yada, yada. This helmet, this head is a, um, a Mark VI head from the new Mark VI squad. It's meant to just go on a sergeant, but I gotta be honest, it looks fantastic on this captain, but oh my god, is this man tired. This is a tired, tired boy who needs to take a nap. But that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sign off now, because I've got things I need to do. Thank you guys for joining me. I apologize for the the weirdness of the stream constantly disconnecting. Um, hopefully you guys had fun. Hopefully you guys got to learn a few things and uh, enjoyed it. Uh, have a great new year. It, uh, have a great new year, regardless of it, if it's past or not. Have a great rest of the day. And if I see you, don't see you again later, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.